Hi, welcome back. This is Jonathan here, and we're going to pick up right where we left off from the previous video tutorial. Now, if you remember, at the end of the previous lesson, we had made it so we could lose a life when we play the game, but the ball does not respond, making the game pretty much unplayable. So we're going to fix that right now. So to begin, go ahead and open the script attached to the ball. So that is the ball script. Open that in Mono Develop, and we're going to do a couple of things. Number one, we're going to create another public static ball. We're going to create an instance of this class, so typing public static ball instance. And if you don't remember from the previous lesson, this is basically going to allow us to call methods within the ball class from another class without needing to do anything special. Uh, very little anything special. So from the start method, we actually have to create that method now. So we're just going to create a new method. We're going to call this make instance. We're going to call it. Now we're going to create what we just tried to call. And we're going to say void make instance open close curly brackets and say if instance equals null, then instance equals this. Next, we are going to actually have to respawn this ball. So for that, we're going to create, or we're going to call another method we haven't actually created yet, and we're going to call this one uh, set ball position. Now, this line of code right above it here in the start method, paddle to ball vector, where we're declaring this, we're going to cut this line of code out of here because we're going to call this line of code within this new method. So go down to the bottom and create a public void. Make it public this time because we're going to need to call this from the loose collider script. And we're going to call this one set ball position. Now we can go ahead and paste this line of code in here. And we're almost done. The other thing to remember is before the game actually starts, uh, uh, it's going through the update sequence and it's looking for this variable to had started to be false. Well, when the ball res resets, uh, the game has technically not started, or at least that new life has not started. So we're also going to have to declare this has started variable once again to be false. So has started equals false. Now within the loop, go to open your lose collider script. And here where we were saying debug.log lost a life, we are now going to call this uh, method we just created from the ball script, and we're going to say ball.instance.setballposition, and that is that. Now I want you to watch what happens when it's going to run, because do you think it's going to work perfectly? Because the answer is no. The ball's actually going to get stuck down here at the bottom right now, and it, it, it's kind of working because we can actually launch it, and it will get stuck, and we're losing lives, and if we go through the whole thing, uh, we lose one more life. Oh, don't go up there. You're slowing, you're slowing my video down. Boing, boing, boing. If we wait for it to come down. Okay, it's not doing me any favors here. But on the other hand, I was getting a good score. Uh, but if, we, if it did come down, we would lose the game. So it is working properly in that way. Uh, of course, we want the ball to respawn on top of the paddle, not at the bottom of the screen. So to do that, we're just going to go back into our ball.cs script, and down here at the bottom, I want you to take a look at this paddle to ball vector. This is basically telling the ball where it should be placed within the update uh, statement. And the first time it's called, it, it tells it the correct place. It tells it, it want, we want to have the ball spawn on top of the paddle. So what we need to do here is we need to create a boolean variable and we're going to create it up here at the very top and we're just going to call it a private bool first ball and we're going to initially declare this one actually to be true so booleans by default are declared to be false uh, but in this case it's going to be declared true and then we're going to go back down here to the set ball position and we're going to say uh, if second, if first ball, which is basically saying if this is true, then do this stuff. And inside here, we're going to put this code. 
sorry, actually has started is going to stay outside of this line of code, outside of this if statement. And in here, we're now going to say first ball is equal to false. And there we go. And the reason, of course, that we're doing this is basically to say uh, that this is our first ball. So now if we go back and we run this game again and we go to lose a life, it's going to properly respawn on top of the paddle. So for all intents and purposes, this is actually working now. But sort of, we can still make it a little better because if we go to our scenes folder and we uh, choose a different level and then we put our prefabs back in, so placing the canvas back into level two, uh, reattaching the main camera to it, and then uh, putting back our gameplay controller in place, we're gonna have a problem. When we start off, uh, it's still not going to work properly yet, even though it says three lives at the top of the screen. Really, we only have one life at this point. And the reason for that is because in the Lose Collider script, at the very top, we set over here if application load level name is equal to level one. Well, for our player, this is okay, but if we want to do any play testing and test later levels, it might be a little frustrating because it's we're only going to have one life when we start up later levels. So this is easy enough to fix, fortunately. Uh, all we're going to do here is just uh, control this with another boolean. So over here, we're going to create a public static boolean. We're going to call it first level loaded, and we're going to declare this one to be true. And then in the start method, rather than saying if application dot loaded level name equals level one, we're just going to say if first level loaded, meaning this is the first level we're loading in our game, and it doesn't matter if it's level one, level two, level three, or level 564. And then here at the bottom, we don't need this print statement anymore. We're just going to say first level loaded is equal to false. And one more thing here, uh, if we lose the game, we're going to have to redeclare this one to be true again. So first level loaded is equal to true. Now, watch what happens if we, well, this is uh, the second level, if we run start on level two, we are now going to also be starting with uh, the correct number of balls and lives. Uh, if you're wondering why it didn't work though, that's because I did not actually reattach the live score and coin score back to the controller, gameplay controller. So we have to redo that. Start on level two again. And now we have everything is working properly. So that's great news. It is all working very well. Uh, the one last thing we want to do here, though, is just a little quality of life update. And that's to add a sound effect to uh, the game when the ball hits the lose collider. So give me one second here. Sorry about that. So what we want to do is take our, uh, add a sound effect. So I'm just going to add some of the sound effects I used in my other game. You'll have to find three. You're gonna find one sound effect for the uh, dropping a ball, another sound effect for picking up coins, and another sound effect for uh, hitting a purple block. So right now we just, we really just need the one for dropping a ball. I'm just adding all three because I have them here. I'm just going to turn them into 2D sounds once you add them into the game. Apply those changes. Now, under the Lose Collider script, we are going to go up here and we are going to declare a private audio clip. And we're just going to call that one, oh, I don't know, Ball Lost Sound. And right above that, we are going to type serialize field, which if you remember from the previous lesson is going to allow us to add something to that in the inspector, even though it's private. Uh, now we're going to go back to the inspector, we're gonna take a look at our loose collider, or is it here, loose collider. Uh, we, it's asking us for an audio clip, so I'm gonna put this dropped sound in there. Update the prefab. And now we're gonna go back here and where we drop a ball and lose a life, we are now going to say, actually, I'm gonna do this here, for, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna put it outside the if statement because it doesn't matter if we're 
uh, losing a ball or losing the game, we're going to just say audio source dot play clip at point ball lost sound transform dot position and give it a noise level of 1f. And now we're going to just test that out and see how it sounds. And wonderful. We get a sound effect when we lose the ball. And if it dies, it cuts off a little bit there. And that's okay because we do have a sound effect and we do have a working multiple life system. So that is that for now. I, it's good. And in the next, thanks for watching. In the next video, we're going to take a look at starting to implement a collectible coin system that's going to allow our player to gain extra lives. So if you, if you have any questions, let me know. But thank you for watching and uh, hopefully subscribe. See you next time.